I would like to start with a quick little meditation. Um, just everybody, just where you're at, just close your eyes and just relax. And I'm going to guide you through a breathing exercise with me. And then I'll just soothe you into the mood. So everyone, just close your eyes. And I'm going to have you take three deep breaths with me. So breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. And breathe out. Sit in the stillness. Allow yourself to relax. Allow your shoulders to drop, your jaws to unlock, and your tongue to release. Allow your mind to empty to just the soothing sounds of my voice and the mystical waterfall in the background. This is the energy when you are in the presence of feeling the energy that is around you. Allowing yourself to be in the moment. Be still and feel the love that is radiating throughout this room. Understand that we are all here for a reason. And every time we come together with like minds, there is magic that happens. There is transformation that happens. And there is healing that happens. Knowing this and accepting it, embodying it, and allowing it, what this whole week is about. So now as I have you breathe with me again, I want you to let go of any constraints any weights, any outside distractions. We are here together in union for peace, for love, and for restoration. So again, I have you take three deep breaths with me. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. And breathe out. eyes. How's everyone doing today? How you guys feel? Peaceful, right? Let's make this what it's supposed to be, a peaceful, calming, relaxing environment. So as Shun introduced, my, my name is Marcus Brown. Um, I'm a reverend, um, ordained minister, as well as an author. Um, intuitive reader, intuitive um, energy worker, um, as well as a speaker and uh, um, a life coach, spiritual life coach. 
And I've been doing this for uh, professionally, realistically, for about two and a half years. But I've been in the field for the last five, six years. Um, I've really gone through my own transformation with understanding energy and how it actually plays a part in our everyday world. So what I like to do as a metaphysician um, is to tie both worlds together. So the spirit world with the physical world in the best, um, best way possible that we know from things that are already here. So I love to tie science into my work to give people better um, foundation and understanding of what energy work truly is. So that's what I'm gonna dive into here. And unfortunately, like I said, I wish I had the slides so then you guys can follow along with me, but I'm gonna do my best to um, direct it in the same way. So the first slide is basically, what is metaphysics? So do anybody here ever heard of metaphysics before? Okay, so you guys have the gist of, of what metaphysics is. So the, the Webster's Dictionary of uh, what metaphysics is, is metaphysics is a type of philosophy or study that uses broad concepts to help define reality and our understanding of it. So what I love to allow people to understand that with metaphysics, it's a philosophy. So we are philosophers at heart. We're always pondering what is it that is moving us that we can't see, what is driving us that we can't see, what is connecting us that we can't see. So um, I love to tie that with the sciences because sciences are philosophers themselves. They are one of the first types of philosophers in the sense of questioning, finding out what it is that we are missing here, what it is that we don't know about this thing that we have to dive more deeper into. So with metaphysics, that's how I am in the spiritual world. So I dive deep to find out practical applications to apply this depth of reality because we are all we all feel it, we all know that it's around us. We all have some type of um, understanding of the spirit world. Just throughout history as human beings, we've all been connected to something that was greater than us, that was outside of us that we could not see. So understanding that, finding pieces that um, show that evidence, um, show that manifestation of spirit into the physical world is what I love um, looking for because those are the bridge gappers. Those are the bridge gappers between um, the people that are strictly on one side and the people that are strictly on the other. If they allow themselves to open up a little bit just to see another side, then they can move forward just a little bit. They don't have to make a huge drastic shift, just gotta move forward. If everybody moves forward, then we all meet in the middle. And that is my goal, is to make sure that we all come to a terms of meeting in the middle, because that is the, the way from you know, biblical texts and just understanding balance and really finding that. And so that's the definition of the metaphysics through Webster. And it is concerned with explaining the features of reality that exist beyond the physical world, um, such as energy, such as spirits, such as um, things in that sense, which is all energy. We all know that and we're all coming to terms with that, that we're all energy, even though um, Einstein told us this before and we just, you know, took it as a formula and not really apply that formula to what we are as beings. So the next slide is what is energy healing? So energy medicine has been defined as a branch of integrative medicine that studies the science of therapeutic ad, um, applications of subtle energies. So it's basically the understanding of the energies that are already around us and understanding how to work with them. Um, there's nothing that we do as energy healers that sciences don't already do with machines. It's just we don't have machines. We've understood that I'm an electromagnetic being, you're an electromagnetic being. If I go into your field, our electromagnetic beings and fields are gonna mix and match and whatever byproduct that is, depending on our conscious level, because that is what you know um, affects our vibrations and our frequencies that we give off. It, it dictates what I'm gonna get a, go leave off with and what you're gonna leave off with. So with that understanding and with that knowing through science of just atoms and molecules mixing together and you know sharing um, energetic signatures and changing 
it's the same thing as Abdul Tate and apply to us. We're just a bigger um, example of those little microorganisms because we are a microorganism and it's a huge organism. So understanding that energy flows through everything, energy is everything, everything is energy, allows for us to separate the, the 3D um, outlook on everything as being solid. Um, once you start working with energies and realize that nothing is solid, everything is constantly moving, then you realize that you yourself is constantly moving. So when you feel yourself vibrating, you're really vibrating. You're just feeling it. Like everyone has a vibration. Everybody has that. So understanding that and being around that and working in those fields, you start to feel the flux of different energies. So personally, I can feel when someone's mad because it's very dense. And I can feel when they're very happy, it's very light. It's just off of the energetic signature because of what they're giving off and what I'm picking up when I'm interacting with them. So that's how energy healers really read energy and work with energy in those ways because it's already there. We just are feeling it and um, translating what we're feeling based off of a spectrum that we've had since probably the 1950s, I believe, of emotions. And they've known each emotion gives off a frequency. But they don't share this information with us because I don't know. They want us to continue to go to, you know, their therapies with their machines and their radiation instead of natural healing with others. Um, hi, good morning. You come in. <laughs> so another method of energy medicine is um, whether human touch or device based, like I said, um, science uses more devices than humans, which I won't understand fully um, because of the, the disassociation we have with um, technology in terms of um, how it associates with us as humans instead of going with other humans and using the human to human contact that we all need to survive. Um, really looking at that to see how we can take away from all of these machines that are causing the radiation that are that is um, you know populating more um, energetic filth so to say into the atmosphere more so than just us generating our own electromagnetic fields and us getting back to what we know um, by grounding outside, which neutralizes our fields, you know what I mean? Drinking water, exercising, things that dispels those negative that we take on just by interacting with our environments. So just understanding that and knowing that, um, that they have these technology, that they have um, evidence that backs energy medicine through devices, we want to move more into um, the the human, the human um, technology, the the body's technology. It's a innate um, system because we are already programmed to do the things that we feel we need to go outside to get. We are programmed to heal ourselves. We have to just stop and allow it. So with the understanding of energy healing and energy medicine, it allows us to tap into things without having to go in digest a pill or go sit in a room. I can just go sit outside if I'm not feeling good and soak up some sun, put my feet in the ground and just relax. That's all I have to do for 10, 15 minutes a day. And if we start doing that and actually stepping back outside to feel, we'll start to feel more, we'll start to understand more because just like we're um, energy healers are translating the energies that we feel from people it's the same thing when you go outside. Knowledge, and we know because Einstein, I mean, um, yes, Einstein, that we, energy cannot be created or destroyed, just change. So all this energy that we feel on a daily, just being in this place, nothing has really been created or destroyed. Everything has just been changing. The energy has just been changing. It's changed, it's changing. So when you go outside and you sit in nature, and you hear and you feel, you're really translating the energies from that land. And every land is different. So when you start to understand that, then you start to understand people and environments. You start to understand why some people in East Coast energy is a lot more fast than West Coast energy. West Coast energy is a lot more lax. It's the land. 
everything happened here in America on the East Coast first. And everybody that went to the West, they were the slow settlers. They were the, the um, not the, the um, with the Perrys and, and the, the harsh drawn carriages and stuff. They were looking for a more slower essence. They wanted to go and live in that, that aspect. And the land helps, and they also help the land in that sense. So that's why it's still like that energetically because of the slow times. And on the East Coast, it's always fast, it's always rapid because it's always ever trying to catch up, trying to make something new because of just that energy of when we came here and settled. It was just new, and everybody was wanting to build and build and build. So just understanding just the energetic signatures behind things um, really allows us to tap into the field. And when we tap into the field, we can not only change ourselves in the field, but we can help influence others as well. So if someone comes into our vortex as healers and we're in a good place and we're in a, an, in a, in a, in a aligned um, operating space, then we can directly influence someone that is not conscious of where they're at. They can be sad, they can be depressed, they can be, and you can have the conscious awareness of what your energy does when it's around someone. And you can get to a state where you're elevated, where you're in a line, and then you go talk to them, you just go sit with them. You're healing that person. And science has proven through the heart-brain cohesion of what, when we are in a good place, how it affects everyone else. And it is a fact now that they have evidence that we directly influence each other. And if you are aware of yourself and you're around people that are not necessarily aware, they're being moved by their outside energies. A lot of people are being moved by their environments, by things that are around them, and they feel like they're trapped because they don't understand that that's not necessarily them. That's not their energy that they're feeling. It's the environment's energy that now they're taking on and embodying. So now they think that they're stuck, that they're depressed, that they're this. You're just hanging around a lot of crappy people in very crappy places. <laughs> Change that and you'll start to feel a little bit better. You'll start to feel a little bit lighter. And with that understanding, your environment, the people you hang around, if you are around uplifted people and you have a bad day, there's no nothing that is going to happen besides you being uplifted you are going to have to get into that frequency or you will be so miserable you want to go away from it you will repel yourself from the change but when you are really open to it you feel it and you want it and you will go to it and you will match it and then you will feel better you'll walk away like wow i'm feeling a little bit lighter i'm feeling a little bit healed because you really are healing yourself when we are and a different vibration than um, a dense, low energy like sadness, depression, all of that, it weighs on us because it's very dense. When you're light, when you're lighthearted and you're working out of love, when you're enjoying life, then things roll off. Things don't affect you and stick as much. You can walk into a room where everyone's upset and you're like, that's on them. <laughs> I'm gonna keep my energy, I'm gonna keep my feel. And everyone has that possibility and that understanding and that awareness but it's just how much you know um kendrick don't kill my vibe it's the same thing he's talking about i don't want my energy to change because your energy is changing so don't kill my vibe i'm going to go over here and keep my vibe it's the same thing and that's vibrations so i always let people know when they talk about vibes you're talking about vibration you're talking about frequency you know you in a good frequency you don't want anybody coming and disturbing that and that is what everyone um it's, it needs to get to a certain point to understand that it's not anything that's outside of you that is really the determining factor of how you feel inside your bubble. It's your awareness of how much stuff you're allowing outside of you to affect your bubble and that you take in into your being. So when we really evaluate that, we'll start to see a lot of the things that are not from us. A lot of the issues we deal with are not from us in the sense of coming from within. It's things that we've been surrounded around so much that now we've attached to it. Now it's become a part of our field in the sense of our understanding. So, okay, I'm mad about this, so I'm just gonna be mad about this all the time, all the time, all the time, because it's the, the best feeling because I'm so used to it. 
So we get so used to feeling some type of way or feeling this or feeling this energy that we just take it on and embody it. Instead of um, allowing ourselves to know that we dictate how we want to feel by those actions that we take. So if you don't want to feel mad all the time, remove yourself from those mad people. Remove yourself from that environment that makes you mad. Then you'll see that you're not mad anymore. It's just a little irritating. Why was it irritating? Now, you can really get to the depths of things once you understand your um, connection to them. So that's just a little deep part of just energy healing in that sense. Um, the next slide, like I said, if I go too fast, please stop me because I can talk on this subject forever. Um, sure. Yes. You have a question? Oh, <laughs> hey, <laughs> the next slide is um, understanding the confusion. So I know this subject um, is something that causes a lot of confusion in the community. Um, just me coming from the South, I, I understand how anything that is, that is new can be viewed in a scope. So my biggest thing was when I first um, started understanding energy healing and stuff, um, I was talking about it with everyone because I was like, oh my God, I really understand this thing that I thought was like fiction. I didn't believe this at all in the sense of evidence. And I'm like, oh, it's evidence out here. Hey guys, this and this and this. I got demonized, I got shunned, I got called crazy. And it was only because I understood that anything that you introduce someone to that's new, that has a bad connotation already, that we have new evidence to, it's going to take a while for them to actually open up to it. So this is why I love to do this presentation, because I'm not necessarily even speaking about spiritual anything, speaking about very practical scientific evidence and things that we can look at through data that is right there if we look, they're not going to show us because they want us to continue to go to them and get their pharmaceuticals because that's an industry and the industry is not going to make itself poor. So <laughs> what they do is <laughs> keep these informations locked up in a little vault that you have access to. They're not going to tell you where it is, though. You just have to go find it. So when you go looking, you go finding it. Um, it allows for when you step out into those places that you know that it's fear based, you know that it's, it's, um, they are kind of skeptical, then it allows for them to really step back and not even focus on the spiritual aspect of it, but just the practical aspect of it. So a lot of the things that I've come across with understanding the confusion of what's behind it is that many people have never heard of energy associated with their bodies before, which is, which is outrageous that, you know, we talk about energy with everything else. We talk about, you know, um, 5G and how everything is affecting us, but we, we don't even talk about how we affect everybody because who am I? I'm worse than what I'm seeing out of y'all. You know what I mean? I'm worse than what I'm seeing in anybody else. So if I love me, your bad ain't nothing. <laughs> that is nothing. Let's get through this. Let's move forward. Let's get that understanding. So that's why I, um, I take this subject so, so serious because it's not a, the disconnect is such an illusion just based off of the lack of information they provided us. So when we have the information, and we choose not to look at it, that is just ignorance in the sense of um, fear. So how do you combat fear with love? You let them know it's nothing to fear. It's nothing to be afraid of. You're not stepping out of your belief by understanding what energy healing is. Actually, you are understanding your belief because how many healers was it, was it in the Bible? And they all did the same thing. They all laid hands or spoke life into. Those are the same aspects that we do today. It's just not in a sense of what we see it as um, in religion. It's not under a religion. And then even in the religion, Jesus and his disciples never did anything underneath the Pharisees. So they didn't do anything in, in a religious type of way. They just did it because spirit told them to. <laughs> So they went out healing people just 
Jew, Jews and Gentiles, just because Spirit told them to. So when you when you understand that and you see it from a, 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 a very practical way, then you get to understand that with the energy healing, with the understanding, we're way more smarter than we were back then, way more advanced than we were back then. So now we can really take those people and test them to see what they're doing when they're doing this healing and then see how the electromagnetic fields change and reverberate and how, you know, the frequencies that they're in and channeling and things like that. We have evidence of this through science now. So when we take that into accord, it lessens the burden of the fear that, that, that you're going to get chastised, you're going to get punished, you're going to get... I always go off of my intuition and I, excuse me, I will always follow what spirit is showing me. So when spirit comes and um, shows me something that uh, makes me question my beliefs, I have to sit with that. I have to sit with that. So I, I don't, I understand when I'm in spaces and I'm speaking with people that have a belief, I want them to know I'm not trying to change your belief. I want to expand on your beliefs. I want to expand on your understanding of certain things, not change you. Be you. Be exactly who you're supposed to be because that is what you're supposed to be at this moment. But that understanding will help you tweak a little bit of the fear behind it. It'll alleviate some of that tension that comes with that. So that's really what I like to um to talk about when I'm talking about energy healing and God this is why I don't really talk about spirit as much because it's, it allows for that, um, for that own person's awareness to get there when it, when it's, when it's time to get there and connect with spirit, then you can discern the things that have been said. Um, and the third one is the fear of being hurt or hurting someone else. So I know a lot of people that are very scared of energy healing because they feel like, the practitioner is going to do something that's going to make them feel some type of way. And that is, you, you're already feeling some type of way. <laughs> so when you, when you go to any energy healing or any, you're already feeling some type of way. So that practitioner is just going to help you feel better. You feel lighter. And there's evidence of Reiki because I'm, I'm a master Reiki practitioner as well. So um, there's evidence of the physical benefits of Reiki. So anxiety gets ridden, depression, your body relaxes, um, aches and pains go away. It's literally used in as a, um, um, when someone's about to pass, they use Reiki in hospitals now to help them alleviate the pains and the, um, the angst behind it to really help them transcend. And then also when people are coming out of major surgeries, they help people for the pain. So you can get Reiki as a uh, um, alternative method of medicine now, which has never been heard of only because of the evidence, because people stopped caring about what the scientists were saying in the pharmaceuticals. They were like, no, we, let's go do our own trials. Let's go find out about this. Let's go do that. And then start seeing the evidence of all of these benefits of literally healing someone, just being connected to them in a field and in a resonance that you are getting them jolted back to where they need to be. So it's us helping ourselves, helping each other. And that is where I believe we're getting back to and getting that understanding that we need each other. We don't need necessarily devices we created that, you know, we need each other that devices that were already created, that we're just steady evolving and steady updating the programs with because we're human beings. And with that understanding, with that connection, it allows people to move into it um, without that angst. Because everyone's, everyone's fearful. Everyone's afraid. And a lot of people are afraid of being, being seen. So they hide. And with that hiding, when you allow them to know that they're safe, there's nothing going to happen. You're going to get benefit from this technique. You're going to get nothing but good life feelings from this. Then they tend to relax. And with that relaxation, there's not a wall up. So when you're working with someone that has a wall up, wall up, 
you, you might as well wait till they pull that wall down because you're just going to keep hitting something that is not going to move. So when you allow people to lower their shields and their guards by just letting them know that you're safe, this is nothing but love. This is all light stuff. This is no darkness. You can't, it, in, in Reiki, there's no way that you can use it for anything other than what it's meant to do in the sense of good, uplifting, um, rejuvenizing, realigning, because the very creed of Reiki is every day you sit before you do, you said, today I'm going to be a good person. Today I'm going to open my heart up. Today I'm going to just be. That automatically puts you in alignment with just being. You don't have any type of negative. You don't have, it removes you from the process that you're doing. So it's just spirit working and moving and allowing. And that allows that person to really feel that love from source, that love from spirit through another person. And when you are aware of that, when you are doing it, um, and you see someone that you know that has been so built up and tight, and then they just relax, that's the best feeling that you can get as a practitioner, you know, because it allows you to know that, okay, this person is at peace. This person is at peace. Everything else after that is spirit. Spirit is connecting with them now because now they're at peace. They're still, they're being. And with that, they're getting in tune with themselves. They're getting in alignment with themselves. That healing is happening for them. So as a practitioner, I always tell people, I'm not, I'm not, I'm just a vessel. I'm just a vessel that knows how to get out of his way. So I get out of the way, let spirit do what it needs to do, and then I know when I'm done. And after that, I don't I will translate a message if it's needed. Other than that, whatever happened between you and spirit was between you and spirit, you know. So just understanding that um that fear with a lot of people is is what I like to really touch on to and the skeptical of things not seen. So everyone, you know, a lot of most people, they have to see things to believe them. But when you start to allow yourself to move without the evidence of seeing, that's what we call faith. And when you become a faith walker, your whole perception of this place changes because you start to see that the things that are not seen, the things that are um, not felt in the sense of your physical touches and senses are the things that move us the most. So your intentions, <laughs> you know, your wants, your desires, you can't see them. You feel them, though. You feel them intensely. You feel them immensely to a point where it makes you make an action. So when you understand those things that are not seen, then it allows you to help understand the things that are. So why does this person operate this way? Well, how are they thinking? What's the thoughts that is an energetic signature that is continuing to perpetuate in their mind? This is why they act that way. So let's hit the energy signature, not the action. Because when you hit the energy signature, then you get to change and tweak certain things within that person. So now they're not even looking at that the same way anymore because the energy signature has changed. This is what we call paradigms. And I'm big on mental transmutation as well because that's where I feel um, that energy is so intense at. Like you, my desires, my wants, my thoughts, perpetuate into actions. And that action or done over time, that's my character now. So that's who I am. So I always like to tell people about those thoughts and those energies that you are around can perpetuate your thoughts. So in that environment, in those, you know, those people, if they are still in that same energy and you're around it too long, that energy is going to stick to you. Those thoughts are going to stick to you. And you're going to start thinking those thoughts. And you're going to think those thoughts are yours. When they're not, they're just there. Your thoughts is here. But when your brain is getting bombarded with information, it has to digest it. It has to break it down and then give it to you in a way. But you have to know you because you are not the brain. You have a brain. <laughs> so using it and understanding it allows for you to really let go of the things that we've been so plagued by that really we can just be like, no, I don't, nope, don't want to do it. 
because you have that energy because <laughs> you are energy so you are in a, a alignment in assignment to that energy signature that you give off so you are in you will have responsibility for how you feel all 100% of the time 100% of the time what you allow is up to you as well so understanding that really helps us know what others are going through and what we're going through as well um, just based off of the 3D aspect, the physical, if you see somebody doing things in their emotions, have understanding by looking at them and then understanding the energy that they're around or the energy that they are holding within them. And then you can know how to talk to them or speak with them, or sit with them to alleviate some of the things that they need. And I, I think that's just human courtesy as a part of you know who we are. So that's understanding the confusion of what energy healing is. So the next one is the human body, mind, and soul. So quantum physics teaches us that there is no difference between energy and matter. All systems in the organism from the atomic to the molecular level are constantly in, in motion creating resonance. This resonance is important to understand how electromagneticism, um, radiation, and light can have different effects on the body. So basically what I was just saying with quantum physics really proves a lot of the things that we understand about spirit. It understands, I mean, it, it explains a lot of the things that we um, can't see in the reality of what we understand as manifestation. So knowing that we have electromagnetic energy um, being a magnetic being and electro, electro being, um, we understand the pulse and the attraction of when you are around things and it feels good to you. You want to be around that. <laughs> That's that magnetism that is happening. And then you also understand that when you're around someone and they're, they got socks on and they walk on a carpet and they come touch you and you just got shocked. You're electro. That's what it is. You're electric and you're moving currents through your body all the time to a point where if we took the power we had in our bodies, we can detonate as bombs because that's how much power we really have within our vessel all the time, moving around, doing what it's doing, operating us. So when we understand that from a um, scientific point or a very grounded physical aspect. It's like any type of, um, you know, robot that we've been trying to build or any type of machine to do this and that we have all of that inside us so when we channel that energy and we use it to create when we use it to transmute we are really using the creative energy that we use for everything else that is explosive <laughs> So it's that same frequency, it's that same energy, it's that same science. It's just, it's in our bodies and we don't explode. <laughs> we expand. Our fields expand. When you are opening up your heart and you're using that energy and that currency and that current, it's expanding out and it's creating. Whatever energy is coming from that, it is creating. So working from the heart and understanding the heart and its energy field, um, your heart's energy field expands out, I think, five feet from the body, larger and more wider spread than your mind's energy signature. So everything has a field. We have a toric field around us all the time. This is how um, you can walk into a place where someone can be standing behind you way back here and you can feel them because you're already connecting to your environment through your field. So with our heart, when we have our heart open, our heart extends out further than our brain. So your heart's filling your environment before your mind's creating a thought for it. So you are already know what you feel before you think that you know what you feel. So that's why having that awareness and, and trusting that intuition, trusting those senses, those subtleties, you know what's around you before you really truly know what's around you, before your brain has time to digest it. Your heart is already there. So that's why people say live in the heart, understand the heart, move with your heart because your heart is the truth. 
it's telling you exactly what it is. It's not it's not changing it to fit what you're what you're able to comprehend through your mind because your mind is that tool. Your mind will break things down to a way that you can understand it. But your heart is just this what you feel. So if you ever felt like, oh my God, why do I feel like this about this? Why am I feeling like this? Well, that's where you need to sit with. <laughs> what did you just do? What did you just interact with? What did you just see that made you just instantly just feel that? Instead of being like, why am I feeling this? I shouldn't be feeling this. No, you, you felt it. Why? <laughs> and understanding that will really help um, a lot of people understand how they are interacting with things and how things are interacting with them. So um, working in the heart, the heart-brain cohesion um, is a quote that, that they have shown, according to research, that um, the heart energy is said, like I said, to reach out to, to three feet of the physical body um, and can be detected by, um, by another person that is standing near them. And we've done that. They, have, um, they actually have exercises where you can feel, stick your hand out, and you can feel that person's energy as they walk away and see how far their field truly is. Um, and then they also done it by um, you know, connecting people to different type of, excuse me, different type of machines that track the energy and how it's moving through them and things like that. Um, I don't know if you ever heard of Krillian photography, but I'm going to get to Krillian photography in a, in a bit too because he was a very special guy and um, allowed me to see more of what the government has been hiding from us for so long. It's ridiculous. Um, but yeah, the heart-brain coherence at... Um, it says, this is the quote from Psychology Today on that. When we are in a highly coherent state, we are less likely to be affected by another's negativity. These are facts. So these are things, I'm going to say it again, because these are things that people don't hear um, because they, they don't really put it out there. But we're changing, and we have to allow ourselves to gain more knowledge to change and move forward. So when we are in a high coherent state, we are less likely to be affected by another's negativity. We are able to remove, I mean, to remain emotionally composed and adaptable to whatever is going on in the external world. In fact, we can disrupt the, the incoherence in another person who is much more receptible and susceptible to external influences. We can even enter a room and sway the hearts and brain waves around us. So this is, this is in psychology today. These are, this is information that we know that it's here, that it's data enough for them to trial, trial, trial. Okay, this is true. Put it out here. And where is it? Why are we not talking about it in our sciences? Why is our sciences still very basic in school? Why are we not letting our kids know, hey, those interactions you're having with your kids on the playground, with your friends on the playground, mean a lot more than what you think. You can actually make their day or you can break their day. And then they have to go home and deal with that. The suicide rate for kids is ridiculous right now. Like it is literally ridiculous right now. And it's kids, it's not, t it's kids 10, 11 years old. And having this information, having the knowing of how much we impact each other, I think that what we should do is change the way that we are interacting with each other instead of trying to further distance the interaction we have with each other. Like I love technology, I love what they're trying to do with the VR space, but that is not what we need to do. <laughs> that is not what we need to do. We need to have people sit down one-on-one -on -one and just look at each other. Just stare at each other in the eyes for five minutes and that be your VR space. <laughs> and then you go, away and do whatever you need to do, but do that for five minutes, 10 minutes a day, because that is what we need. That is what science has shown us <laughs> throughout history, that we need each other, that babies need physical touch when they first come out, because that changes their whole entire existence here. So understanding that, understanding how much we really tie with each other, 
really allows for us to be more open and receptive to, to understand each other more. Instead of being so judgmental, be more understanding. Understand that, okay, let me see how you feel by not even necessarily having to influence or have any discussion. Let me just sit, let me just sit with you. Okay, I see you, I see where you're at. All right, well, let's shift this. Let's do a meditation. Let's feel something else. Let's move into this different state. If we all took care of each other in that sense, we wouldn't need half of the things that we are putting into our vessels to give us that antidepressants, you know, anxiety. People are anxious because they are feeling how they are inside and like, I wonder if everyone else is looking at me. I wonder how everyone else is feeling. I wonder how they're creating that within themselves and it's bottled up because they, they don't think that they can express themselves in front of someone else. They don't think they can be themselves. If everybody allowed that, then that anxiety rate, whoop, drop back down. Depression. If we stop doing the things that we're doing in the sense of eating the foods that we're eating because they're telling us to, you know, actually going out and being like, hey, you got chickens in your backyard? Can I get some eggs? I got some collard greens right here that I just, you know? And just that connection will uplift that depression. Being outside, all those things, getting back to the basics and really understanding what we are as, as human beings. We are electromagnetic beings. We are energy. We are forever changing, flowing, and going forward. That would never stop. So with that knowing, with that understanding, when we leave this vessel, we know that we're just continuing. <laughs> so when we're in this vessel, let's continue this vessel. Let's continue this, this manifestation of that energy because that energy is always changing. So you're never fixed in your expression either. You're never fixed in your signature. You can always change. So anybody that has ever been through anything, you're not, that's not who you are forever. You can always change your energy signature. You can always change your attachment to that aspect of that energy and shape yourself into what you want to feel like, what you want to be like in this world, how you want to influence people in this world how you want to be seen in this world. And that all comes from your inner vision. And when you hold true to that inner vision, you're in alignment with your energy signature. You're in alignment with your innermost self, with your original self, <laughs> with that spirit self. And when you're walking in spirit and you're walking in faith and you're allowing yourself to make those transitions and make those um, changes, then you really get to understand the world more. So personally, this is what I've been doing for the last six, seven years of my life is changing my association with what I was told, with now what I, with what I feel, with what I've seen, with what I've experienced. And the world that I knew six, seven years ago, completely different world now. I don't interact with anything the same because I'm not the same. And that is because I took the time to understand my energy signature. I took the time to understand why am I mad? Why am I upset? Why am I feeling this way? Oh, because I'm attached to energies that are not even really who I am. So it allows you to really move out of that space and into a better resonance. And let me see what, okay. So I got one more slide about Krillian photography and just the understanding of what Krillian photography is. So Krillian was a scientist back in the 1930s, and um, he invented a type of photography that captures the energy that leaves the body. So a lot of aura readings or aura photography and things is Krillian technology. Um, I am very, like, curious with things, so I'll go look things up. So um, it was a spread of CIA documents that came out about um, biolocation, remote viewing, and stuff like that. And I was like, 
yes, it's right up my alley. I got evidence. Y'all can't tell me this ain't real. You know, this is real. The CIA been hiding it from us. So, <laughs> so going into that, it was a, 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 a passage about um, a magician. And it's the magician. And I was like, why, why is this in CIA documents? Come to find out, it's about Krillian and his wife. And the story is a man in their village um, was known as a healer. So he came to them and wanted to know what's different from me. Why am I, what's, what's going on with me? What's different with me? So Krillian being the scientist that he was, he was, he was able to um, do a bunch of trials and a bunch of tests for this man because he was told that he just does healing with healing of hands. So they wanted to find out why, what is different between you and what's different between me. So he hooked himself up to the machine, he hooked his wife up to the machine, and he hooked this guy up to the machine. And all of the evidence of how this man be, was a healer all showed by the difference between how his glands were. The energy that was produced through his hands was different compared to what Krilly and his wife was. So when he laid his hands on someone, the energy exchange, he would really take out and suck out the bad things that was causing them the illnesses through the glands in his hands and the electromagnetic um, excursions, the, the, the whatever he, he excurted out of his hands through sweat, which is why you see healers, their hands heat up, their feet heat up, we sweat a lot. It, it's a different um, bacterial thing that is happening that uh, when it is, when it is um, engaged with someone's skin, it produces a different type of um, reaction. So it pulls more so than it takes out and goes into someone. So when he saw that on the, um, through the data and was like, this is amazing. Like, can we continue to run tests? And he kept running tests on him, kept seeing it, and he would try to do it and see that he wasn't, he didn't do the same thing for him. He didn't have that um, same um, bacteria byproduct by him being him. So this data, this information is stored in CIA, and it was released in 2004. It was out since 1940. And no one talked about it. And I've never seen anyone talk about it yet. But everyone talks about Krillian photography. And I'm like, how many people really know who Krillian really is? Do anybody know that they've already done this test? They've already had this evidence that they've kept from us. That they just released a bunch of in 2004, 2008. And didn't tell anybody they released any evidence about any of this stuff. So remote viewing, astral projections, all of these things that they've been doing studies on for ages. It's just now finally getting to people like me that will blast it to everyone. <laughs> because that is the bridge between understanding what we're fearing and, un and fearing the things that we think we understand in that sense, such as the sciences that we put so much trust in in the pharmaceutical aspect not the sciences that are really trying to just find out what is but more so the pharmaceuticals the ones that want to control the one that wants to continue to keep you coming to them doctors don't give you cures they don't make you money <laughs> so if I, if with that understanding you can change the way that we associate with these um, entities these corporations and we can actually make the change to go back into what we need instead of what they want us to have and that's just knowledge and through understanding and that's why I love talking about Krillian's experience because it's it's phenomenal that we've had that since the 1940s and, and, and 30s and we're just now talking about Krillian photography I just heard about it in the last like six, seven years because I never knew what it was. And it's here, it's here, it's here. And it shows that we are energy and that we affect each and every last thing that we 
<laughs> interact with trees, plants, earth. It's all living. So any living object, any living thing that gives off a energetic signature, you can connect with, you can understand, and you can gain knowledge from. People that talk to trees really talk to trees. Trees are brilliant. Trees are one of the most intelligent like communicators in our on our planet. They talk all the time through mycelium. That's how they communicate all the time. It has for ages, pre predating man. So let me go sit with a 700 year old tree. Yes, that's knowledge. That's wisdom. He's I'm gonna learn a bunch of things about stuff that I never even realized. Only because it's the energy there. The energy is not gonna go away. And we understand that knowledge is kept in in those energies, in those things. Back in the days, they used to put, um, they used to store knowledge in crystals. <laughs> and people don't understand, in every single electronic device you have, it's a crystal. Every single one of them. So people, they're like, oh my God, you got crystals. You have a phone, that's a crystal. You have a computer, that is a crystal. It is powered by a quartz crystal. You have a watch, it says quartz for a reason. You, you have a crystal that is literally programming everything that we're doing and being used as a system. So it's just getting back to what we know and stop letting them tell us what we think we should know. It's, that's how we come out of those dark times, you know. So that's it for me on energy healing. No, it's probably it's really soothing. Trust me, I'll go out there and have a whole conversation with one. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, do anybody have any questions about anything that was spoken about energy healing today? No questions. Definitely. Definitely. You mean in the sense of um, with others? Yeah. You can definitely amplify the, the energy that your heart emits. If you want to eat healthy and in your field, based off of um, based off of your environment, definitely based off of your diet, <laughs> based off of, you know, just where you're at um, internally, too. So like your diet, physical, physical stuff too, like all of that can um, shift the amount of energy you're able to pour through. And with the uh, um, direction, with the conscious direction too. So that plays a huge part into it too. Cause I can, I can direct my heart energy to you or when I'm not, it's just, just free flow. And so I'm just free flowing. But if, if I conscious and I can direct it, I can, so yeah. I always suggest meditation. If you can sit and just walk away for at least three to five minutes and close your eyes, just take three deep breaths, it will allow you to um, sit back a little bit. It disassociates you from that emotion that you're caught up in or that feeling that you're caught up in to really sit back and be like, okay, why am I feeling this? What is this? And if it's something that is really, really, really heavy on you, going outside and grounding. I always have my my shoes off because I love feeling the neutral energy of Earth. So anytime you are going through something that's too much, go outside. Go out in nature. Go get that fresh 
air. Go around trees. Get oxygen because that oxygen is helping your brain. Now you can think more. You can think more clearer. You can actually see more. Take your shoes off, ground. Now it's neutralizing your actual energetic field. So now you don't have all those negatives just floating around in your electromagnetic field. Now it's neutral. So now you got, oh, it's a little calm, it's a little peaceful. Breathing in good air. Let me drink some water. Now I'm thinking different. Now I'm feeling different. Now I can move. Now I can make a choice now. Do I want to feel this way? Or do I want to go back to feeling that way? And that is where you make those choices at. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Don't be shy. Um from an energetic source in the sense of knowing that you have two sides, um, yes, but they wouldn't be healers. Yeah, they'll be more so like the angry person that we all know that's always mad all the time that you can never make happy. Those are those people. <laughs> those are those people. They're going around just putting their energy just outwardly from internal. Those are the misery love company people The you can't do anything because they're just miserable. They're always going to be miserable. You always have a choice though. So even if that person is miserable and they're rah, spurring out miserable things to you, that's very low dense energy. You don't have to, you can just block that out. So you, you don't have to ever like I said, you don't have to be affected by those aspects of those people. You know what I mean? Only time you are affected by them is when you allow them to penetrate who you are and what you are doing and be around you to where you forget who you are in the midst of it. Those are when those type of energies can infiltrate. But when you're at a high elevated state of who you are and you know who you are, when you see those people, you're not going to, it's just going to be like, oh. I love you, just keep moving, you know? <laughs> and you'll end up changing their, vibra their vibration, their frequency with that because it'll make them have to see something that is a vibrational difference for them. So then it makes them say, do I want to be mad still? Why are they so happy over there? What's, why are they so happy? They're curious now, you know? That's why they, oh, you always happy. You, well thank you, why are you upset that I'm happy? Because it's not matching their frequency, so they want to see why you're so happy, what he's doing, what did they, because it's curious to them, because they don't really want to be miserable. <laughs> they just don't know how to not be miserable. <laughs> so it's just understanding that. You don't have to really worry about too much of um, the other side, because it won't even, it won't even, it's oil and water. So it, it, won't, it won't mix unless you change your components to being a little oily and then <laughs> then it will <laughs> mix in that way anybody else have any questions okay well i love you guys i appreciate you guys you me with me this morning thank you i wish you guys could see the slides you have a question play some of my music <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. Um, is Shen already on this? You guys? Are <laughs> I love how you guys love my music. Never feel hell. Fire only makes a diamond harder. Sharpen every corner like a pocket. Surrounded by my team, I can only get smarter. I came out the mud like a black lotus flower. So no amount of pressure can ever flip a flop me. You can all try, but you can never stop me. Gotta stand strong when the storm comes. Everybody wanna make it rain instead of trying to save some. Put it back where you came from. And watch it trickle down like the rain does. 
Then suck it back up when the sun comes. Listen close, cause you might just learn some. It's tricks, every trade, whatever trade, when it tricks. Any closer you get to success, is it easier? It can slip. You only get one shot, that's words from him. And I ain't from eight mile, where we walk, this ain't shit. It's easy to throw in the towel and face defeat. But that's what separates the strong from the weak. Adversity seeks, adversity speaks, adversity teach. Adversity seeks, adversity speaks, adversity teach, adversity seeks. Seeing all the signs, they make sense. Son of a bastard, nothing like the prince. Mother wasn't greeted with no gifts, but more with consent. Papers hit a sign with no frankincense. Baby in the manger, more like the hood. Seeing all the bad can't help but wanna feel good.